Let's take a listen to um, the morning schmo, Mrs. Schmo. She calls her sub Mika Brzezinski. Let's take a listen. Go. The White House is attempting to discredit infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci amid his dire warnings about the Trump administration's coronavirus response. A White House official told NBC News yesterday that, quote, several White House officials are concerned about the number of times Dr. Fauci has been wrong on things. The administration then shared a list with several news outlets that included nearly a dozen past comments by Fauci, which a Trump official said had ultimately proven erroneous. Well, let's stop. Can we see the list? Because they're probably right. I just named three or four myself. I just named three. Shouldn't the American people know? I mean, should the media actually be doing this? If Fauci is going to be held out as the number one planet expert on this subject, which he's not, I mean, I've had experts, we've had them on TV and on radio from Stanford, from Yale, from Oxford, from Rockefeller College, and there are many, many more who have questioned what Fauci's doing. And these are really top-notch scientific medical experts, data and statistical experts. Go. Included Fauci's January comment that the virus was, quote, not a major threat, and his guidance in March that, quote, people should not be walking around with masks. A senior administration official told The Washington Post that Fauci no longer briefs Trump and is, quote, never in the Oval Office anymore. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But he has the president, he's got his entire task force, and the vice president is in charge, and they do meet. And Fauci has access to the vice president. So the president of the United States has to deal with China, which is out of control. Now China and Iran apparently are getting together, making a deal. He's got to deal with North Korea, which is threatening again. He's got a lot to deal with the president of the United States. He can't just keep meeting with Fauci, 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 Fauci. And the federal government really has done all it can do. There's nothing else it can do. It has launched all these, uh, all these efforts and research for vaccines and multiple companies all over the country and all over the world are working on it. Various therapies, he's launched that, he's incentivized that. They're all working on it now. What do they want him to go into a lab and actually start working with test tubes? It's ridiculous. On the other hand, you got Biden sitting there uh, in, his, uh, in, in his house like a flounder. He's just flopping around. There's nothing going on there, nothing going on between the ears. He could, I would have I told him earlier what to do. Where's my lemonade? So anyway, that's Biden. So Biden, you compare him to Trump, there's no comparison. Go ahead. Person with knowledge of Trump's calendar, Fauci last spoke to him during the first week of June. Fauci has not yet commented on these reports. Um, I want to bring in the reporter on this. Uh, let's bring in national political reporter for NBC News, Josh Letterman. Uh, What's the deal with this strategy? Is it because the president is embarrassed by Fauci? Because many could say that the president's getting embarrassed by the science, which is proving him wrong every day. Having Hold super on. spreader. First of all, what's this guy? Is he like on the scene, standing on the roof of the CDC or something or other? Looks like he's in Prague or something. But in any event, the president's not following the science. Tell me, what science isn't the president following? What, what science isn't the president following? And what is it that the president's supposed to do? The governors are in charge of their economies. They're making decisions today. The governors ultimately, and the school districts are in charge of the schools. The president's having to prod them, open the damn schools so kids can go to school. Most, not even most, the massive majority of them are going to be utterly unaffected by this. But if they don't go to school, we don't even know what's going on in these homes. They can have an abusive parent. There could be drugs in there. In other words, these aren't, the world's not perfect. Some of them aren't getting meals. Some of them aren't getting medical attention. You know, our schools do a lot of things these days. And the funny thing is, if you had a budget from a conservative president to slash the schools 10%, well, who's going to eat? They're not going to get medical care. What's going to happen to this program, that program? And now the Democrats are saying 100% don't go to school. Well, what happened to all these things that the, the children need in the school? Doesn't matter right now. Why? Because we want the opposite of normalcy. We want upheaval. We want parents to vote for the Democrats because they're tired 
of their kids being around and not sending them to school. They're tired of the virus. They're tired of all this stuff. They're tired of the violence and the riots. and the, the t- We need a change. That's what the Democrats are hoping. We need a change. So let's turn to Biden. Well, he's a nut. Doesn't matter. I need a change. God, the, I can't keep doing this. Go ahead. Events in Tulsa, Oklahoma will kill people. If the pandemic, if the virus is passed around, this isn't Fauci, this is science. So why are they taking it out on him? Wow, that was a great question, wasn't it? Listen, Trump is Hitler, Trump is mentally ill, Trump is not following the science, his followers are white supremacists. So what do you think? Go ahead. Back to White House to lob political attacks at its opponents, uh, maybe at members of Congress or the media from time to time. You don't expect the White House to be doing an oppo dump on its own top infectious disease. Let's stop. It's not the White House's own top disease infection expert. He's been there. They inherited him. Let's be honest. And he's been wrong a lot. And the president is not ignoring the science. He has other people giving him information. Burks, that whole task force has other experts. HHS has other experts. So that he's, the, 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 the White House is getting all this various information in, as well as these outside experts and so forth. We don't have a czar. I mean, I know the Democrats like czars while they pretend they don't. We don't have a czar. Go ahead particularly as a pandemic is raging across the country. But as you just laid out... Now, wouldn't you go to your national political reporter to talk about a pandemic and the science? This has been the problem all along. They send kamikaze political reporters into the White House, or like this guy, to talk about the pandemic. So all you get is the politics. Shouldn't they have science reporters? Shouldn't they hire experts on infectious diseases? Isn't the goal, or shouldn't it be, to provide us with factual information so we know what the hell's... No, we get Josh Letterman, whoever the hell that is, a national political reporter for NBC who's going to tell us what to think. Go ahead. Exactly what seems to be happening with the one-two punch of this statement provided to us over the weekend from a White House official saying several White House officials concerned about his past statements, as well as this list with citations of all of his past comments from much earlier in the pandemic when, frankly, doctors did not know nearly what they know now. Oh, wait a minute. I thought Biden knew everything. He said he would have acted faster. He would have acted immediately. And that the president isn't following the science. In fact, you and the media keep saying the same thing. Now you say the scientists didn't really know what they were doing. It was early on. And, you know, well, the president had to act early on. And that's exactly what he did. Go. Is transmitted. And Mika, as all of this was playing out, Dr. Brett Girard, the testing czar, was on Meet the Press talking about Dr. Fauci as well. Take a listen to what he had to say. Now, wait a minute. So this guy's an expert, too. But they don't like this guy. Because he's not dumping on the administration. Ah, Dr. Girard. Yeah, yeah, but, but, you know, he's different because he's not Fauci. He's not the Fauci. Go ahead. Respect Dr. Fauci a lot, but Dr. Fauci is not 100 percent right, and he also doesn't necessarily, and he admits that, have the whole national interest in mind. He looks at it from a very narrow public health point of view. So, Miko, Uh-oh. why is the White House doing this? Well, we know that... Wait a minute. Why didn't you answer the man? Why didn't you respond to what he said? Notice they all have jobs. They're all still getting paid. Nothing's happened to them and their families in terms of income. But tens of millions of Americans are not in that situation. They're not in the... In, in, they're part of... In many ways, they're part of the state because... But for government, these people wouldn't even exist. This is all they report on. Okay, but some poor guy owns a restaurant. Some poor gal owns a salon, and they're being shut down again. The world's a very different place for them than what these reporters report on. Everything is myopic. It's Washington, D.C.-based. And so Fauci's been there 50 years, and so he has all these press contacts, all this goodwill build up. And so how dare you question Fauci? It's not the science. It's not looking at, in fact, how he's been wrong. It's don't touch the persona of Fauci. Why? Because of the narrative. What's the narrative? Trump's a screw-up. 
It's his fault that people have died, not the governors, not the experts. Not, it's Trump. Trump couldn't do enough. Trump didn't do enough. Uh, I think I saw him golfing, uh, you know, three weeks ago, whatever. You know, that sort of thing. It's all political all the time. All right.